The system is broken. The video I put up yesterday, I saw so many comments moving in after a month. Uh, I saw a lot of derogatory comments. That ain't the play, that ain't the game. And I was watching this man, man, male channel, male content channel this morning that was literally preaching antisocial behavior. I'm getting ready to say something. A lot of you who were making those derogatory comments, who, especially the person who was talking about, I'm a leader. Let's talk about that. Where's your company? Where's your organization that you lead? You know, I get all of these people who talk about, I'm a leader, I'm a Mac, I'm a billionaire, I'm a billionaire. They don't have no money. They don't have no company. They have nothing that they're leading. They're just a leader in their own mind. Um, I know that a lot of y'all think because I'm older that I am not hip to what's going on today. I am very hip to what's going on today and I'm about to say something that's gonna be very, very insensitive. A lot of you motherfuckers are weak as fuck. I'm just sitting there, you know, when I was coming up, it was nothing for somebody to meet, date, and move in together within the month. That, ha that happened all the time. I'm like, I'm just sitting there like, how have we devolved? Because let me go ahead and say something. Based upon what I'm seeing, and this is a long-term prediction, we're gonna have the next generation of cat and dog people. Right now, this is the generation of people because years ago, I put on this YouTube channel, one of the reasons that I would have a living girlfriend is I saw what happened to people who didn't do that. I saw that they became, it became untenable for someone to live with them because they, they got used to living life the way that they wanted to live life and they were not willing to alter or change who they were to coexist with another human being. And I realized that early on because there was a period 2009 to 2015 where I was living by myself and this was the Craigslist protocols were popping off. And I, one day I realized you're so happy being by yourself. And I said, that's right now. You're happy being by yourself. You like living on your own. You're enjoying yourself. You're having a good time. That's right now. And I knew at some point in the future, I would want to have a companion. When is the best time to prepare for the future? Right now. Because I'm sitting here looking at the comments, looking at the weakness. Because here's the thing. I see so many comments that are rooted in absolute stark raving terror, not fear. Fear is not being on a balcony and you're kind of looking over and you kind of get a feeling. That's like a little fear. I am talking about many of you men are living in a state of stark raving terror. I actually witnessed on the male content YouTuber trailer talking about, I always advise my people to never tell a woman you love her. And I was just sitting there like, what kind of shit is this? And then I realized, once again, to the weak, to the moist, to the scared. Because let, let, let me go ahead and talk about this. You're scared to start a business because you feel that you will fail. You're scared to get in a relationship because you fear that you're scared to get married because you fear that you will get divorced. 
you are scared to try to reach for greatness because you feel that you will fail. So you're living your life in a state of perpetual fear, or as I want to call it, stock raving terror. You guys literally wake up in the morning shaking and trembling with fear. I, once again, and I get a lot of comments about, I don't understand the working man. You, you're absolutely correct. I've not had a job in 25 years. I don't know what the working class is doing. I have no clue. I have worked from home since 2009. I don't know what y'all going through. I have no clue what y'all going through. I do observe the social economic trends that I see happening. I do watch that, but you know, I, I don't think like the common man. I don't think like a worker. I think like a boss. I think like a business owner. So when I see something like this whole thing with like, once again, Work remote is coming to an end. I know it's like, oh, work remote ain't gonna never leave. It ain't gonna never leave, all right? He who has the gold makes the rules. That's a new one. He who has the gold makes the rules. These ain't the employees with the gold. So mark my words. And you know, only a small subset of America can actually do remote work. That's what's so funny about that conversation because you cannot be a restaurant worker or Uber driver or truck driver or warehouse worker and work remote. Can't do it. But what I am seeing is a class of weak men. That's, that's, I'm going to call it like I see it. Y'all are weak as hell. Weak, scared, and unaccomplished. It must suck to be you. I'm like, I, I'm just sitting here like, looking at the landscape, looking at the moistness and the weakness that you are afraid to tell a woman that you love her because she may hurt your little heart. She may hurt your little heart. Oh, you so. I'm just sitting here like, and I get this, it's like, once again, I was currently dating in the same environment that you were dating in, but I was getting dramatically different results. Let me tell you why I was getting dramatically different results, because I'm dramatically different from you with your weak ass. I mean, I, the, just the stuff I see online, just the stuff that I see online rooted in anti-social behavior. Never love a woman, don't date them a single mother, don't move in with a woman, don't enter a relationship with a woman, just fuck. So you have all these women out here who don't have boyfriends, who don't have husbands. They're just getting fucked. And you hang out with your boys. You got more love for your boys, which to me is kind of homosexual. Once again, to me, it's a little homosexual-ish. Um, so you got all these women out here, no husband, no, no, um, family, no home, no, no anything, just um, out here, just getting fucked. Society will destabilize. And fortunately, there's a lot of men who are not online, who do not consume this antisocial behavior of the manosphere. It is mostly, and this is what's really, really dangerous about it. It's mostly schooling young men who have not experienced life, 18, 19 years old, and they're feeding them this dogma. They're feeding them this um, indoctrination of 
how to be an antisocial man. And once again, this new wave of men and women is the next generation of dog and cat people. You're gonna, cause here's the thing that's gonna happen. At some point, you're gonna reach an age of reckoning. You're gonna reach a point where you're gonna look back at your life and you're going to be really happy at the choices you made, or you're gonna be really sad and disgusted with the choices you made. And based upon what I see, cause we have a whole bunch of men, we're gonna be cat people, dog people, cause here's the thing. And this is something that I realized a long time ago, about 2009 through 2015, I was living by myself six years and I enjoyed living by myself. I was happy. I was comfortable. The Craigslist protocols were popping off. I was having myself a damn good time. And then one day I was thinking, you're happy now. What about the future? And I'm, I'm about to keep it the buck. I'm not going to be able to fuck like I was at 40, at 65. It ain't happening. And that was my superpower because I was dicking these chicks down. So I was like, so I started to get in relationships and have move in girlfriends because I have seen what happens to people because let's say you live by yourself, and this is especially bad with women. You get a woman who's lived by herself 15, 10, 15, 20 years. Someone trying to move in with her, it's going to be hard. <clears throat> I remember a friend of mine, she got married and she had been living by herself. And she was leaving these hilarious Facebook posts because she was not used to living with anybody. And like he could do the littlest thing and she would lose her mind because she was so accustomed to being alone. She was used to being alone. And she's like, y'all didn't tell me marriage was going to be like this. I mean, just had me cracking up because what we have right now is a lot of these manosphere channels and the females, not so much the female channels because females are still trying to get relationships. Um, but one of the things, that has happened is we went from men who went to foreign countries, France, Germany, died over there to protect our freedoms to now we have men who are literally living in stark raving fear, afraid to tell a woman that they love her, afraid to get in the relationship, afraid to start a business, afraid to live life, Afraid to just try, afraid to just try. I'm like, cause one of the reasons that, you know, shout out to the nerd gang, the nerd gang, you guys feel me, you get me. A lot of you come in there and when you was like, I'm a nerd. And for my fellow nerds, welcome to the channel. But I also attract, opposites attract. Remember that opposites attract. I attract a lot of weak, moist and feminine men because here's the thing. You know, when you get sick, you know, something's wrong, right? So these weak, feminine, moist men, they know something's wrong. They are highly aware that something's wrong. They're acutely aware that something is up with something's going on with their life. They, 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 they know, they know. And they come to this channel and they see me and they hear the things I say and they get triggered because frequently like this video, I am talking about the weak. I'm talking about the moist. I'm talking about the feminine. I'm talking about the low testosterone having men of today who are simply not leaders ain't even close to being a leader, not even close to leading anything, building anything. And they come here because once again, this is YouTube and black folks come here cause I am black 
and they see me and they're like, hey, he's like me. And here's the thing. I ain't nothing like you, bruh. Because one of the things is I'm out here dating was was dating in the same environment that you were dating. But I was getting dramatically different results. I was able to go to a sugar baby website and pull multiple women off the website and not have to pay them a damn dime and dicking them down left and right. So I ain't like you. I'm not going to get the same results that you're going to get because I'm a nerd. See, here's the thing. And this is why I'm making these predictions that a lot of you, if you don't change your ways, if you don't change your ways, you're going to be a lonely ass old man. I was reading, I was watching this, um, this video and this guy, he had some rental properties and he had this elderly tenant and he remembered, he said, the last time I saw him, he didn't look too well. And this guy actually died in his house because he was like, he went knocking on the door, trying to get him in there. And he goes in the house, he breaks in the house. He finds the guy on the sofa, dead body decomposing. The place stinks because he's decomposing and he's been there for about 60 days on that sofa, dead TV on. That's how a lot of y'all are going to die. You're going to die that same way alone in your house with the TV on because you are a scared, weak little bitch who's afraid to fucking try. So that's how a lot of y'all going to end up. You're not going to end up like some of the men that I've seen when I worked in the hospital. I remember this one guy. He was 95. Um, he was, he had cancer. And I remember going to his room. He always had family up in there. Uh, he had his first wife who he had divorced and his second wife taking care of this man. And I remember one day I go to the room and he ain't there. And it's like, he had died. And, um, <laughs> The nurse was like, you know, it was amazing because he like, he said he had a room full of people and he said, you know, I'm about to go y'all. I really love all y'all. Thank you for being here with me. And then he died. You know how many of y'all are not going to die like that? They ain't going to, and this is the thing. And let me say this really clearly. When many of you die, because you, you don't have a family, you didn't get married, you had no children. You live that lone wolf life. No one is going to fucking miss you. No one, not your mama, not your daddy, nobody. No one is going to miss your sorry ass. No one's going to give a fuck that you died. How's that for some strong cocaine? that you have lived on this earth 60, 70, 80 years, and when you die, not no one's gonna give a fuck that you're no longer here. That's the path that you're on. And hopefully you hear me, because the nerd gang, nerd folks, the nerd tribe, they hear me. But a lot of you weak, and like y'all be all up in my business. You wanna know why I have the life that I have? Because I simply, try well let's try this once again the car rental business documented on youtube complete shit show and i was like hey i tried it didn't work out moving on to the next thing because i i, I simply try i simply try that's why my life is different from yours and you want to know that when glendon cameron dies there will be many, many people sad. How do I know this? Oh, I had a heart attack three years ago and people were looking for me. It's like, where's Glendon? People were like, what's up with Glendon? People were looking, they were checking up on me.
never checking up on me. I got my friends and all my friends. I had people checking up on me. I had people looking at me. I had someone taking care of my ass when I was in the hospital. Y'all ain't gonna have that. You gonna get sick and you gonna be alone. You gonna get cancer and you gonna be alone. You're gonna develop some disease and you're gonna be alone up in the hospital. There will be no friends. There will be no family because see, what you have to do is build these friendships and relationships in good times, which is right now. But you ain't building because you scared this woman go hurt you. She go bury you and take all your $30,000. She just go hurt you. You weak motherfucker. I know this girl. She lifts weights. And she's like 180 pounds and so she could deadlift 400 pounds, which ain't nothing but genetics. Ain't nothing but genetics. 100% genetics on that. Because the average 180 pound woman can't deadlift 200 pounds. She's got extremely good genetics. Own genetics. If I knew, because I was really fast when I played high school football. I was fast, about 200 pounds. If I had knew and I had support in someone to say, hey, you're pretty fast. I could have went to, I could have played college ball, but I didn't have that support system. I didn't have anyone looking out for me in that regard. But this chick, she's blonde, big calves, big legs, big booty, blue eyed. And she was dating this dude. And this dude was like, he knew she liked to lift weights. He didn't know how much she liked to lift weights. He didn't know how strong she was. He just knew that she went to the gym and lifted weights. Yeah, me and my boys working out. Come work out with us. <laughs> See, not only you guys are mentally weak, many of you are physically weak. And she goes to the gym and she can squat more than they can squat in good form. She can go below parallel. They live more than they did live. And she out benched two of his buddies. Now, this wouldn't have happened to me and my boys, you know, because we, we, we're, we're that old school. The goal was to go to the gym and get stronger and stronger and stronger. Here are my stats at the height of my peak condition. 425 pound bench. 675 pound squat. 750 pound deadlift. 225 pound overhead press. Genetics. I, I had really good genetics. You know, I had to work hard to get to those poundages. But here's the thing. If you don't have the genetics, you will never lift that much weight. But even my boys who were not even genetically inclined were benching like 250, 275. The average man could get to 250, 275. There ain't no way in hell that a girl would have came to the gym and outlifted us. But in today's world, with these guys going to the gym for aesthetics versus trying to get strong, not only are you mentally weak, you're physically weak. You're physically weak. So this anti-social situation that we're in is going to be a bad outcome for a lot of people because to quote my neighbor, Miss Sally Mae Jones, if you live long enough, you're going to get old. This is fact. And many of you are not building families. You're not building businesses. You're not building relationships. You just hanging out, playing video games. Then you come here and you come after me. Well, he started another YouTube channel. Oh, why he trying to do stocks? He's trying to get more money. Like, let me go ahead and just tell you something. Let me explain something to you. The majority of you weak, moist motherfuckers are nowhere near sophisticated to actually understand my motives. I'm getting ready to give away a pretty nice bedroom set. You want to know why? Because I don't want to be hassled with trying to sell it. I'm just giving it away. Probably could get 500 bucks for it if I actually wanted to invest the time to sell it. 
See, y'all don't understand me because you don't know what it's like to have money. You don't know what it's like to live in a surplus rich environment. You don't know what it's like to actually pay all your bills and still have money in the bank. You pay your bills and your money in the bank and keep stacking your money keeps stacking. You don't know what it's like to actually have a bank account where each month there's more money in it even though you're spending money to live. You don't know what that's like. You have no clue to what my life is like. But you sit back and you assume from your cheap, crampy little apartment, you assume you make these projections. But once again, I'm like, I'm going to say it. Except, you know, shout out to the nerd gang because you guys get me. But the average, weak, moist, antisocial, scared lip man living in stark terror, afraid to get with a woman, afraid to build a business, afraid to do shit in life, think you can understand me. You come in here with your little low intellect comment and you think that's going to rock my world. Bitch, I was homeless. You think I'm scared of some little keyboard warrior? I'm like, who? someone left this three paragraph comment. I didn't even read it. I just left my response and blocked the fool. I've actually gone through some real shit. You think I'm in the late, in the words of the late great Bernie Mac? I ain't afraid of you motherfuckers because most of you are wusses, wimps. You ain't about shit. Once again, there were many of you who were talking about you know, when uh, I put up the video where I sympathize with R. Kelly, yeah, I know people in Atlanta, man. You need to come off that. I'm like, bitch, I'm going to keep talking. And I kept talking. Ain't shit happened to me. You want to know why? Because of you weak, moist little men on YouTube and the Internet. Because every day I would go out into the real world and get completely different treatment. So once again. A lot of y'all are set up to be really, really miserable old people. This is the path that you're on. Because once again, the family starts with one man and it starts with a woman. And without that, there is no family. There is no family. There's nothing. And a lot of you clowns, you're wasting time. <laughs> I watch a lot of prison content, guys who've been in prison, and I watched this one video, this guy, he was in prison 30 years. I've only been an entrepreneur for 24 years. This dude was in prison six years longer than I've been an entrepreneur. And I'm telling you, man, you don't have as much time as you think. So you can keep pussyfooting, you can keep messing around, you can keep sucking up all this anti-social manosphere content. It's antisocial. Anybody that will come on YouTube and tell you, like I tell all my men, never tell a woman you love her. I'm like, just scared, just terrified, like a child. But once again, y'all can keep doing it. Because here's the thing. Um, I'm at the point in life, and I, I'll, I'll share some with you. I was with this chick, and she wanted to break up. And you know what? And this, this is this is my automatic de facto response when the chick wants to break up. If you gotta go, you gotta go. I do not beg, I do not plead. And I was like, you know, I'll pack up your stuff and I'll put it in the box, and it'll be for you whenever you want to come get it. Guess who changed her mind about breaking up? See, once again, you guys don't even know the psychology of women because you haven't dated enough women. Like anytime a chick tells me, hey, I'm unhappy, I'm like, that's really, really upsetting. I do not beg, I do not change my behavior, I do not even come off my path. And nine times out of 10, guess who changes their behavior? Like, oh, I got a friend. And this happened years ago. And this dude gave me some game. 
He was married and his wife said she wanted a divorce and she was unhappy. You know what he started doing? He started fucking other women. He started making a big show of getting dressed out, putting on this cologne and going out and meeting women and coming home smelling like pussy. They're still married to this day. See, I am not in that, like once again, I ain't built like you weak motherfuckers. You wanna know why I take this position? There are more women than men. Like, once again, you can get in a relationship with a woman. You can have sex with a woman. You can have a woman live with you. You can get married to a woman. And if this woman becomes somehow dissatisfied, the majority of you have no clue how to deal with it. You start making all these overtures when here's the thing you don't understand. A lot of women just get up in their feelings and they'll get a notion in their head and watch you freak the fuck out and then they lose all respect for you. Lose all respect for you. It's the craziest thing. But once again, a lot of y'all are set up to quote the late, great Kevin Samuels. You're probably going to die alone. Straight up. Straight up. All right. So September is coming up soon. So if you want to get in the intellectual property school or the program, you want to jump in now because I know this happens every time that before the price goes up, I'll have a whole bunch of people pile in, typically the last day. So what do you get in the intellectual property school? You get training that will teach you how to get money back on your taxes if you have a job by simply starting a YouTube channel. And once again, there are literally millions of people who have started YouTube channels and the vast majority have set them up incorrectly. And also, I'm gonna put this out here. Someone told me about Toby Mathis Esquire. He has a YouTube channel and he talks about creating a trading company. All right, here's something that I want you to imagine for your future. All right, I went ahead and bought my trading computer and I went ahead and the, my trading computer will be here between the 5th and the 8th. My monitors are downstairs right now. You wanna know why I can get trader status with no problem? I have the time. I have the time. I have the time. Once again, I'm probably gonna do a thousand trades my first year. I'm gonna trade like the markets open 240 days. So let's see. 240 minus 75%. So I got to trade <clears throat> 180 days. Now this is documented based upon your brokerage account, what days you trade it. So I can, you know, and the market's closed virtually every holiday. Labor Day is closed. It's closed on the weekends. And I'm not one to take these long vacations. Like literally I've taken, the longest trip I've taken was like two weeks. I have no desire to travel around the world. You wanna know why? Because I've been to Paris, I've been to France, I've been to London, I've been to, um, God, Brazil. I've been to Colombia. I've been around, see, I've already been there. I don't have this desire where I have to literally take off and just go around and travel because I've done that. I've already done that. So if you wanna put yourself in the position where you have the time to do what you want to do. Like, I'm going to explain, like, I have a perfectly good computer, which now is up on eBay because I'm selling this. I'm selling my old laptop because I just went ahead and got the Mac Pro for my trading computer. And I got a Windows based computer for the programs that I can't because one of the things I'm learning is that they have these displays and they have another computer that they enter their trades. So whether it's a Windows based system or not, I, I'm prepared. I already got a Windows based computer. Like I said, if you want to set yourself up for the future, jump into the intellectual property school so you can learn all of these tax 
tactics and strategies so in the next three years from now, your life will be remarkably better if you ain't scared, if you ain't moist, if you ain't weak.